I believe I am live. Hang on. I just came up. Hold on. I'm just making sure I'm still on the line. Hold on. Hi, everyone. It's Laura from So Very Easy. I am happy that you've joined me today. And we are going to have some fun along with the kids. So we can kind of have a nice little visit. In the meanwhile, the kids can join us. I'm going to be doing a traveling play mat. And the things we're going to need are going to be very, very easy. A lot of them you probably already have on hand. The first thing we're going to need is a cookie sheet. And after that, a lot of little things. So I'm going to give you a list of things that we're going to need. And then I'll give you a minute to grab hold of them if you can, if you haven't been able to see the Facebook post earlier so that you've been able to get them. So we're going to need this cookie sheet. And with that cookie sheet, what we're going to do is put on it a dry erase board. So just have it so that it's going to fit somewhere on that area. Now you can get lots of different ones. You can get some thinner ones. And this one actually is a two-sided one. Now, if you don't have a dry erase board, you can use these flexible cutting mats. And they're just these little things that you're able to get and, well, they're for cutting. What's great about using these is you're going to be able to cut them to the size that you want. So you have a shiny side and sort of a wrinkly side. So you're going to want to use that flat side. You can also get them in different colors. So that's what we're going to need to start off with. And some two-sided tape, some stickers so the kids can pretty up their boards to make them just the way they want them. So I'll give you a minute while you go get those. In the meanwhile, I'll give you a little story of what makes me think to do this. Uh, way back in my youth, which we won't talk about how long ago that was, I went on a vacation with my family. And I'm from a family of Eight. And we traveled in the car with a big Oldsmobile. And those were the days that you didn't have to have a seatbelt. So there was eight of us. And my little sister, who was very small at the time, would basically climb from person to person all the way around the car. She would sit by, sit on our feet. She would sit on the lap. She would even lay in the back of the big window there when it wasn't too hot. And we had to try to entertain her and entertain us. And no matter what we did, the stuff was always all over the car. So this gave me the idea of doing something that where you can keep things all together. It was a great trip, but we were good. So I see someone is from Portugal. Hello and welcome. Thank you for dropping by. Now let's get, oh, I have a West Virginia. Thank you for dropping by. And we have, hold on, I'm having one here. Oh, one from Mexico too. Oh, that's great. All right, so let's get started. And then um, you're able to ask questions. I'm going to answer them the best that I can because I'm trying to look at the screen and look at the comments at the same time. So it's going to take me some learning skills to go. Uh, hello from the UK. Is that you, Shirley? I know Shirley's going to be coming. Washington, oh my goodness. Well, let me get started and then we can go from there. So if you don't have one of these dry erase boards, you can use this cutting mat. Now the cutting mat that comes that you, they're bendable, which is great because you can cut them to the shape. So for the shape, what I did is I just used that piece of paper, that cardboard that advertised that cookie sheet. And I used it as a template and I was able to cut that out. So that just sort of saved me some time. And I'm gonna keep that because I might use it later on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to take whatever dry erase board we have and put it somewhere on that tin. If you have some of the smaller ones, you can go to one side or the other side and just decide where you're going to want them. The reason we can put them onto one side is because 
hopefully we're going to be able to find some old tins or some kind of a container with some lids on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put magnets on those. So the magnets are going to be able to stay there. So as we move these around, they're going to stay. So if you can go to one side, it would be great. So the first thing we need to do is put the dry erase board or this flexible cutting mat on the cookie sheet. There's two sides. You have a side that's very smooth and a side that's sort of rough. The rough side, both sides would work, but the smoother side works better. It's just easier to wipe off those markers. And once you have it cut the size you want, we're just going to attach it onto the bottom of the board. And I like to use two-sided tape. Now, if you don't have two-sided tape, you might have this little foam two-sided tape. And it's little foam pads, and on both sides, you can peel off, and it's a sticky. So those work great, too. But I do have some two-sided tape, so I'm just going to put some tape down so that I can stick this down. And the kids can still do this. It's great. Oh, and if you have a little wrestling match with that two-sided tape, what you need to do is fold it in half on itself. And what it's going to do is it's going to stick together. You'll be able to then be able to peel back that plastic part and it's going to be easier for you to grab with your fingers. So I'm just going to close of tape and I'm not worried about how exact they are because this is something the kids can do so let me see if I have any more comments while I'm doing my tape here so Toronto Netherlands Florida South African Scotland Utah Oregon oh my goodness this is amazing hello to everyone I'm so happy you're here so I'm just going to put the tape down and you can use as much as or as little as you'd like. I want it to stay permanent so I'm going to add a little extra. I'd rather have more than not enough. And I'm just ripping it off. Now you could a sheet and keep the new one for yourself but I would definitely give it a good scrub so that it didn't have any oil on it from all of the cooking. So once you have them down, I'm just going to pull off. Oops, that was alive. I think I'll do a new one on that. Give it a good rub. Sometimes they'll stick better if you've given them a good rub. There we go. I'll put a new piece down. So does anybody have any questions at all? Because I love to answer questions if we can, since we're doing this. Did anybody watch last week where I was doing a test? And uh, my goodness, you couldn't hear me. You could hear me, and then you could hear me five times. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for everyone who did stay and help me through that. So now we've got this going. And a couple, a little bit more things. Now you can also use a spray adhesive. There are a lot of really great spray adhesives out there. You just need one that's not going to roll off the metal because it's going to, like a hot glue gun, you'll be able to peel that hot glue off of the metal I mean, it'd be good temporary, but it's nice if we're going to be able to keep this permanent. Um, there we go. It's not so bad once you get it going. Okay, so I have that. And I'm going to take that rough side and I'm going to put it down because I do want that smooth surface. Because it's cut, I know I'm going to be able to just stick that in and rub it down see if I have any questions I have some new people one hello from New Brunswick in Denmark California Chicago Barbados South Africa 
Alabama. Oh my goodness. This is like an international party going on. Thank you, everybody. Another one from Ohio. Okay, so now that we have this stuck, it's going to be good and stuck on. And that way, when you're traveling with it, you're not going to worry about it. From there, we're going to be able to decide what containers we're going to put at the sides. I like to put magnets on the bottom of my containers, even if it's a plastic container that you're going to be able to open just so that you can take it off if they want to have a bigger surface or they want to share it with someone they can. And I just have some of these. They're just metal kind of containers. I even have one from Mints. I just put a piece of duct tape over it so I'm ready to be able to decorate that. Now you can use plastic too. You can use whatever you want as long as you're just going to be able to have a flat surface that you can put something on. So what I want to do is in the one container, I want to put my dry erase markers. And now I know you can buy a dry, dry erase sort of, um, it, it's a bigger thing and it, it can erase the boards. But for traveling, I just like to use these little eyeglass cleaners because they work great and they're small. You can throw them in the wash and they can go all over. So I have my dry erase in here to clean the board with. In the other tin, what I like to do is keep magnets. Because this is metal, the magnets are going to stick. So they're going to be able to get more than just coloring with this. They're going to be able to play with the magnets. So I have my two extra tins, or I have my one extra tin that I'm going to put my magnets in. So I'm going to want to put one on one side, one on the other. And if they don't fit, it's fine, because if you put magnets, you're going to be able to move them anywhere you want. So that's going to be an added bonus. Now you can get magnet sheets. And it's a piece of magnet, um, a, a peel and stick on one side. So this side is sticky. And sometimes you can get them in long, thin pieces too, which works out great. If not, you can take them from the fridge. And a lot of times you can peel off whatever that decoration is. Let me show you. I think there's one here I'm able to do that with. Oh, I know I saw one here. So this is just a fridge magnet. And I just can peel off. I just peel off this, this decoration piece. And then... I can use this magnet if I want. So what I want to do is put a couple of strips of magnets so that they're nice and strong so it does stay. So if you have one or two, just put those magnets right on. Oh, I have two that's going to fit. I have, oops, here I'll put them this way so you can see the glue part. So that's the way I'm going to put those two on. Just that that way it's nice and strong, so you don't have to worry about it. And peel and stick is great. Put that one on. Florida, love how you explain everything. Thank you very much. And to think my kids used to say I talked a lot. Do you like to explain it? Because I want you to be able to do it, especially if you're with kids, it's nice. How do you make a sawtooth block out of a 10 inch square? Um, Debbie, there's a video and called how to make a buzz saw. Um, and it's on my channel. Now, when you go to look on my channel, you'll see um, there's a top bar where you can search in, but underneath sort of that picture that says who I am, there's another little area you can search. If you search in that one, it searches just my videos, not all of the videos in the whole wide world. So type in how to make a buzz saw. You're going to start with that 10 inch square. You sew them together and it's, it's all in there. It's very, very easy to do. So I have the one magnet on one side. And I'm going to put a magnet on the other board. And I'm going to be able to use this peel and stick. 
So just take a size that's going to fit. And you're going to be able to cut this just with regular scissors. That's what's really nice about these peel and stick ones. I'm just going to put it on. So the magnet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the magnet right on that side there. And I'm going to make it smaller than what I want. And then I could just use this and cut around it so I don't even have to measure it. Because I, I want it smaller than the tin. I don't want it hanging over. So I know that's going to be enough to hold it. And again, the peel and stick. And I'm going to stick it on the bottom. I love these tins. They're so much fun. There we go. So now we have the two tins that are going to stay on that board so when they're traveling it's going to stay put. Another thing you can do is you can build layers up on this. So there's another dry erase board that I was able to find and it already had the magnets on the back so that is going to also stick. If you're going to put layers on just make sure you have magnets so that it's all going to stay put. And those magnet sheets are going to be great for that again. I'm just going to cut some long strips. And I'm not going to worry too much about it because this is good for the kids to do. If they're old enough to use scissors, they're going to be able to do it on. If not, you can do it. Where did you get the peel and stick from? The For the magnets, you can get them at the dollar type stores. Um, let me show you what it came in. It just came, it would be in a clear envelope and that's sort of what it looks like. And it came in the craft section. You can also get them in rolls and you can get them in small pieces. So I'm just gonna put those peel and stick magnets on one side. So do I have any kids following along? I would love to know if you were able to get any of your kids to come and join us. I had three children and I'm one of six, so I like having kids around. And one more stick. And we're done. So I've put two magnets on the one side and two magnets on the other side. So they're going to stick. The other thing is, don't forget you have the back side. So you will be able to have them stick onto the back side too. Now, the fun part is the kids are going to be able to decorate it. If you have a larger piece, then they're going to be able to decorate all around. If not, there's lots of area that they can decorate and they can decorate the whole thing. Take the tins off, way they can have a bigger surface to decorate. There's so many things they can decorate with. The kids love stickers, and it's a great thing to use. You can also get amazing duct tape, all different colors and different sizes, and it's a fun thing to do. So they can just go ahead and decorate the board. And that is a great thing. I'm so happy they came out with it in different colors. Let's see. So does anybody else have any other questions? Have you ever made baby quilts? How many is the question you should be asking? Yes, I've made lots of baby quilts. I love making baby quilts. It is probably, well, it's got to be one of my favorite things to do because you can use so many different fabrics and you don't have to worry about perfection because the kids are just going to love them and drag them around the house. And that's sort of what you want anyway. So I think they're fun to make. There's so many awesome fabrics out. I'm Jody from David Taylor's class. Oh, hi. Hold on, I just move my mouse here. Was that not a great class? We had so much fun, did you? Wait a minute, you finished your project, I'm pretty sure. I remember. I'm still not finished mine. 
Oh, a little bit too big. I'm going to cut a little bit of that off. So I like to just put a little bit of duct tape just so to hold that on a little bit more because they're going to be bouncing this all over the place. So it's just going to be nice and secure. So I am making sort of a more of a boy's version because this will be for my grandsons. I have two grandsons. So putting this tape down will be a good idea. So what I'm doing is I'm also taping it down around the edges because kids love to get their little fingers in and try to pull that off. So I'm trying to kind of make it a little bit more secure just so it lasts a little longer. That should work out good. Hello from Germany, from Wales and England. I have an English background. I married an Italian, mind you, so. But yes, I guess my Italian background is very close to Liverpool. And no, I have never been yet, but one of these days I would love to make the trip. So both of my parents have an English background, so it's, it's fun. Okay, one more side down. And I'm not really worried on how perfect it is. It's very good for kids to play with and to have fun with. So especially if they're making them themselves, just let them have some fun. This is an easy project. It's great now that you can get the uh, cookie sheets and stuff at the dollar store. And let me just finish taping this on. Hello from Italy. Oh, I love Italy. I married an Italian. So it was my dream as a little girl to go see the Colosseum. And uh, when I went to the Colosseum, I almost cried. It made me so excited. Okay, so now that that's all stuck on, I know that's going to stay and it's going to work out great. And now I'm going to be able to just put whatever stickers I want. I have some great alphabet stickers and glow in the dark alphabet stickers. So I'm just going to put them along my board. And that way it can help them with their alphabet at the same time as letting them play. Besides, they're so much fun. I think I'll start A in the corner and let's see how far I can go around. Great project to bring in a car and bring to grandma's house or just to even bring outside if they're going to be outside you want them outside playing a little bit and that way you're not worried about having them losing things as they're going along I'm just going to keep putting these alphabets all the way up there then I get a chance that I can listen and talk to you way better than video games from Max. <laughs> well, I hope it's better. Well, no, never mind. My son likes video games and he probably wouldn't like my videos. So, but thank you. I have fun making the videos. I never ever dreamed that I would make videos, but I really enjoy it. I've always um, enjoyed people being in my sewing room with me. So, um, it was actually my son's idea for me to start making videos and at first I kind of thought well I don't know you know people are not going to want to watch them but uh, I just and my mom always so in the sewing room anyway so I thought oh well you know maybe I'll do them and give them a try so then once I started I just loved doing them I thought they were so much fun the more I make the more I think to make so it's really nice so this is going to be a great project just for them to you know, put their own stickers on and put their own personal touch on. So I've just taken, let's see if you can see it. I'm going to put the alphabets all the way around. Then with the extra ones, I'm going to put their names on it. So they're able to help with the names. So when you get the one side, do you have to put the numbers? Do you have numbers to put on as well. Do I have numbers? That's a good question. Yes, I do have numbers. Yay. Numbers are always good. 
So the idea is that this is going to be able to go with them. You're going to have those lovely magnets that stick with the containers. And if you can find a plastic container so that the lid stays closed, that will work great. I just kind of like the lids to cl stay closed. That way when they pick these up, they're going to stay all together. Now they're going to be able to draw on them. They can either leave the, their little tins or whatever you've put there, they can leave them there and still use them. And let me show you how great these uh, cookie sh or these cutting sheets work. Let me see if I can write backwards. Hi. It will just wipe right off. It works great. So now another thing that you can do is the back side because we have two sides. So we're going to be able to use the back side. There it is. I have another one that's clear. So I could cut that and put it on the back side and maybe put something underneath it because it's clearer. So if they want to, if I want to put, you know, the letters of the alphabet for them to trace or their name that they want to trace, anything like that, they're going to be able to do that. So I think I'm just going to cut a little piece off here should be about right Where's my... there we go I knew I'd use this so I'm just going to use that as a template again and I'm not going to worry too much about it I'm just going to cut through it and these these are great these flexible chopping mats they also like, work great as templates in the sewing room so again, they have the two sides, a little of the rough side, a little bit of the smooth side. I guess I should take that little sticker off. Oh, that was easier than I thought. Now I'm going to tape on two sides. And I'm going to leave two sides open. That way, if I want to change whatever I want to write for them to learn with, I can do that too. And if you have magnets that have cars or something like that, you could actually do roads so that they can drive and, and follow their roads. Yeah, I want to try to do these videos as often as I can, at least in the summer, um, doing kids crafts and then maybe expand into other things. What would, what would you like to see me do? Do you have any ideas? Because uh, I am definitely open up for suggestions because it's nice to see what other people want duct tape is the best things did you make your mouse bed no isn't that pretty let me show you it was a gift from japan and it's a beautiful little mouse pad and i oops hold on let me put my screen back there we go yeah no it was a it was a gift actually it wasn't a gift for me it was a gift for my husband and I didn't let him keep it because I thought it was pretty. And it's a kimono silk fabric. It's very pretty. So, and one more side on. There we go. Oh, that worked. That fit nice. Who does your camera and editing work? Well, it's a woman that I know that does my camera and my editing work. You're looking at her. I do all my own editing and all my own camera work. I like doing it that way. I have full control over it and I can make sure that it's done the way I want it's done. Not that I don't trust people, it's just right now, I'm the one who's doing it. So if anybody volunteers, I'd probably take them up on it too. So there we go. So I have the end. Now you can glue this on permanently, but by having this, I'm going to be able to put something underneath and then they're going to be able to trace it and then white it out so you're going to be able to get two you know two areas for them to play on and that is it for the board it's that easy just by adding some magnets onto some containers and if you have any other toys that they really like you could put a magnet on just so that as they're walking around it's going to stay and they're going to be able to decorate 
whatever they want. I would try to get them try to get them to put the stickers and stuff around the outside that way they have the center to color but if not you still have the extra mats that you can get and you're going to be able to just use those and keep them together so they're all going to be get, be together it's going to be a quick one to pick up and take anywhere and it's all together it's that simple. It's a quick and easy mat. It's a good project to make with the kids because it gives them a chance to sort of decide how they're going to want it. If you have old tins, they can decorate the tins, decorate the trays, and decorate anything they can with stickers, 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 and some duct tape too. So it's a great project to do. Let me see, I do have a question that's come through just a moment. Could you show, so a vanity case. Okay, are you talking like a makeup case? Um, I could do that. Have you done a tour of your sewing room? No, I'm going to do a tour of the sewing room when I figure out how to get this camera. And I wanna do it live, but right now the camera that I have, it's all on my computer, so it's I kind of had to clamp it on so it wouldn't move as I was banging around. So as soon as I figure out this system a little bit more, I'm going to do a tour of the sewing room. Do you remember your first video? Wow, hold on. Wow, that's a good question. I think it was my tablecloths. I did a video on um, my favorite tablecloths. I like to make tablecloths, quilted tablecloths, and I eat on them. And I'll tell you the reason why is sometimes it's just nice just to be able to sew things. There's just so many beautiful fabrics. It's nice just to be able to do them. So you can only make so many for beds. You can only make so many for friends and wall coverings. So I'll make them for tablecloths, and that way I get to enjoy them every day. And I don't put lots of tiny little pieces in them. These are the projects, quickly, sort of like a quick fix. So I think my first video was on uh, the tablecloths that I had had so far. Are there any drawbacks to making a reversible quilt? Oh, absolutely not. I love doing reversible quilts. Um, a lot of times to make a reversible quilt, I will use, you know, those cheater panels for the back. So I'll have my quilt that I've made in the front. And then the back, you can get the panels that already look like pre-made quilts. And if it's kids, you can actually get panels. And I might just add an extra border on it. So I have my quilt on one side and then the other side sort of has just a fun print that I was able to use instead of just plain fabric. So reper reversible panels work out great. Um, it's just, they're fun. So yes, I love making reversible. And I see another one. How do you teach us? Projects we can do in a day or two. Okay. Um, I do try, there are some projects. So let me, I'll, I'll give you a little idea on how I kind of go along when I do my videos. I try to do, you know, a little bit more difficult a project that's going to take a little bit longer. And then I might do a couple of small ones. So if you see I've done a couple of larger ones, you kind of are going to know that I will have some easy ones to follow along. Or I do have other ones that are a little bit quicker. But you can always ask me and, and I, if you have something in mind and I will do it. Just a moment, I see another can I teach little bags for kids toys? Okay, um, are we talking like a little bag or a little bag? You know, are we wanting like little Hot Wheels? You know what I'll do is I'll do, um, okay, I'll do a pattern that's just a very simple drawstring bag. And what it's gonna, it's gonna be reversible and you're gonna be able to make it any size. Uh, I'll do that video probably within the next couple of months because my videos are a lot of times done so far in advance. So uh, let me see if I can do that. And that way you can make it any size you want. It's going to be a very easy one and you can follow it. It's one of my favorite little ones to go with. 
Um, I think I have another question to see this on another day. Oh, that's a very good question. Thank you. Yes, my test video did not go and stay on my channel. But these videos here that I'm doing are going to be on my channel. So when you go back to my So Very Easy channel, you'll be able to see their little categories that says Tuesdays tips, you know, Thursdays. I'm going to have a one, a little column that's going to, it's live videos, and you're going to be able to watch them. So once this is done, it's going to get uploaded on YouTube, so it'll be there for whenever you watch it. So what about car seats with park pockets? with pockets oh I think I know what you mean mm -hmm. okay I've got that one written down anyways so the boards are great fun um, they work out great it's just a fun thing to take they can customize them any way they want it's just a quick and easy project that you can do together with your kids doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl they're going to be able to make it any way they want to make it now, next week, I'm going to have another project that I'm going to do with kids. Let me show you some of the things that you're going to need. Let me put, clean up my mess so I know where everything is. And this is going to be um, a project you can do for anybody. And it's a project you could do for yourself. It's going to be quick and easy. And I've put it all together so I can show you what I'm going to work on. I think this is going to be a fun project. All right, so here we go. I have it all sort of done. Uh, you're going to need a piece of canvas. And you can get these canvases now at the dollar store. And they're on these stretcher frames. Let me see if I can get it. There you go. And what's great about them is because there's a little lip here, they're easy to hang up. You can get the flat ones, but if you're going to hang them up, this is easier to hang up than the very thin flat ones and it doesn't matter what size you get the bigger they are well the longer the project's going to take or the bigger the surface you have so get yourself a piece of canvas then you're going to need some fabric and you're not going to need a lot of fabric we're going to take some and we're going to cut out some fabric and put it on top of the canvas so we're going to make wall art I'm going to use a product called Liquid Stitch. It's really a strong adhesive, and it kind of goes on white, but afterwards it dries, and it's, it's really clear. So some fabric, and it depends on what fabric they want. You won't need a lot, just little pieces of scrap because they're going to be able to cut them out. Then we're going to put these all together, and at the end, we're going to be able to decorate them. And we're going to and there's many things you can do. Broken jewelry and, and all sorts of little fun things. Little sort of beads. And if you want it a little bit more of a sort of a boy look, you can do shells and stones. And this we're going to put all together. It's going to be a fun project. It's a really nice project, even for an adult, because you can hang it on the wall and you can customize it. So it's going to be a fun project. So it's just going to be wall art. So let me see, I get my huge cutting mat. You can get your huge cutting mats. Um, a lot of the larger chains like Joann's and those types of stores have them. It's really big. It is, how big is it? It's 56 inches by 33 inches. Um, when you find them, they're not with the rest of the mats. They're on the floor in a big cardboard tube and they're rolled up inside that cardboard tube. To me, I really like them. I like it to have on my surface. Then what I will do is I will put cutting mats over top of them, but I kind of use them both. This sort of protects my surface, and then I'm able to go, and that's where I got that one. And I think we should wrap this up as much as I'd love to sit here and talk. My camera will only go so long. So I just want to thank everybody from joining me. And you are going to be able to, once this video goes on the regular YouTube channel, you're going to be able to make comments again on them. I try to answer as many comments as I can. Um, everybody is so generous with their comments, and I really, really like it. It's, it's just like a, a great big family, and I'm, I'm so excited to do it. We have a great 
a great big family from all over the world. And that's one thing what I like about doing these videos. I just have so many friends now. It's it's amazing. I can go anywhere and say, yes, I know someone from South Africa and all over. So thank you very much for joining me today and uh, next Sunday at two o'clock. And that is Eastern Standard Time. Um, I'm going to do this again and I'm going to try to do as many as I can on Sundays. Like I said, I'm going to start with kids things because it is sort of summer and it's nice to do stuff with the kids in the summer. And then going into the fall, well, we'll see what we have up. Well, I'm not too sure what we're going to do, but I'll figure it out. It's kind of a fun thing going live. Hey, everyone, and have yourself a great sewing day. Bye now.